All right, I got a little project here. Uh, it's Christmas time, and uh, everybody gets together, and uh, Christmas tree. Everybody gets together, and we'll listen to Christmas music. But I've got a little issue. I uh, hadn't pulled these off in a while, and I was listening to a Blue Man Group the other night, and I kept hearing something, and uh, I've got a little issue here. So. The driver itself, it was still playing, but it was the voice coil was scraping. So I think I can save it by putting a new rubber surround on it, but uh, I need to get a speaker in there just to play some music. So I've got the 10-inch Nakamichis. I've got two more that I'm going to put in here. Now, I'm pretty sure my port's not going to be right. I'm going to go do the math and figure out what it's going to be the frequency <clears throat> but we've got basically uh, two whoops the two and an eighth inch port and it's eight and a quarter deep so I'm going to figure out what that frequency is going to be uh, the cabinet Calculated to about 2.2 cubic feet. I'm assuming it's half inch wood because uh, <clears throat> I've got uh, roughly 10 and a half. By 17 and a quarter. Oops, give it to me. By 29 and a quarter. I think I've already done the math and it half inch wood, it may be three quarter, but it calculates to about 2.2 .2 cubic feet. For a 10, that's huge. I mean, <laughs> but hey, we're just going to see what it's like. The other Nakamichi I did in a half or 0.6 cubic feet and ported it at 40 hertz. So I'm going to see what this comes out to be with that same port. I'm not going to change the port because I'm going to repair these speakers down the road. Uh, well, I'm going to repair the driver and reuse the speakers. The mids and tweeters still work good in it, so I'm just going to throw a 10 in there with an MDF adapter plate. So anyway, um, let's get this going. Okay, it ended up being 29 and a quarter by 17 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter minus 5 eighths twice gives me 28 by 16 by 9 and a quarter. Multiply those together, divide by 1728, get you 2.398 cubic feet. All right, so then I went to the 12volt.com, which is a great resource for any kind of information you need to know on automotive stereos, alarms, you name it. Oh, by the way, the port that was in it was two and a quarter by eight and a quarter long. Okay, so what I ended up with, this is probably flickering, but the 12 volt shows me at two and a quarter inch diameter port at 2.39 cubic feet. A 21.28 hertz tuning frequency gives me eight and a quarter inch length. So 21 hertz tuning frequency, I think I'll try it. I'll put the stop port right back in the box and put the 10 in there. And we'll see how this thing performs. All right, I got the, the board laid out, ready to make my cuts. Okay, these are the outer holes or the adapters. These are the inners. I'm having to do this because my grill is only three quarters deep. This is three quarter MDF. Once the driver sits on top of this, then it's not the grills won't go on. So I'm going to have to take this piece, trim this hole to the outside diameter of the woofer, then take this one and trim this one to the inside or the mounting of the woofer. This is going to get sandwiched under this. Uh, a little bit of glue and some brads, and uh, that way the subwoofer will sit flush with this. And just to show you, to get this center, obviously you see I screwed up. That was uh, I was in a hurry, and uh, but basically what I did was I measured this across here, and this is 16 inches. So I had just pulled this over here. To 
the 8 inch mark and said okay I'm good and marked it well you're supposed to take this one to the 8 inch mark as well so when you have that one on 8 and that one on 8 you draw your lines slide it over here continue your line across and that's where you draw your pilot for your circle cutter so now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight cuts with the router. So it's going to get real dusty in here and it's going to take a little while. So I'll just show you the end result. Alright, I got all the holes cut. So this is like paper thin. This piece broke off with me. This will give you an idea like how thin you adjust your plunge router. So you just pop these out, and if you want to be real critical, you can just take a flush trim bit and uh, run it around the router table to smooth it up, which I'm going to do. And I'm probably going to round over this edge here, and maybe this edge here, just to kind of make it look a little neater. Um, these other edges here, I don't have to worry about them, because this will be this piece will be under this piece. This piece will be where the woofer's mounted. So the only thing I need to really round over are these two edges right here. So I got to break all these apart and uh, then get on the router table with them. So it shows how close some of my cuts came, just to try to get all I could out of this wood. That one over the edge, a little of the circle cutter, and a little bit of measuring. Not a problem. All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I chipped it all out. It was pretty easy to break off. Just kind of put a little upward pressure and just slam it with your hand and it'll break right off. So here we got a couple of little jagged edges looking. And uh, we don't worry about this here. You know, this is going to be underneath these pieces. Um, kind of jagged around the edges there. Okay. This piece right here, I could put it on the back side or I could make this part of my round over. And I may just make that part of the round over because I got pencil marks on that side. I'm too lazy to... Uh, sand them down. So anyway, I've got the uh, router table set up with a flush trim bit and I'm just going to take this and run it across here and it'll make that look nice and pretty. So let's do that right now. Alright, there's my roundover bit. It's a 3 8 roundover. And this is the piece that I just rounded over. Just soften the edge up is all it did. It didn't really put a whole lot of accent to it. It's better than having that edge showing. So, one more step. Uh, well, two more. i got to drill some holes and then uh, glue it and brad it together. So, we're almost done. Alright, so, got it to this point here. Went to uh drill press and I drilled these. I'm not expecting these holes to line up with the original screws because I'm probably going to offset them a little bit and drill new holes because I don't have the screws aren't long enough to go through this and into the cabinet. So I'm going to rotate, like I said, a little bit, redrill it, and put some regular screws in there. You know, it's no big deal. This is just a temp probably a temporary thing. So here's the sub mounted. Okay. So this is on this ring. So this top ring goes over here, like that, and that gets a very light coat of glue, and I'm going to secure it from the back side with staples, and uh, probably about a good 14 to 16 staples through the back, and it's not going anywhere. 